I'm gonna do a super quick, super yummy aloo sabzi, but crispy. Um, one of the interesting things about masala is probably that it doesn't actually need to be very complicated. <clears throat> There's just this whole canon of foods that are, you know, like a handful of spices um, and then just a little bit of technique. And obviously when you're using less spice, the selection becomes important. So this is going to be a little riff on what my dad used to do when he came home from his big sales days. He and mum had a textile business and he used to do his sales runs in the car all day and he'd never eat dinner. And then he'd come home and tell mum how hungry he was. And so this is what would happen. It's fried potato, black mustard seed and salt. He just used to use salt and, and red chili. But we're gonna use red chili, black mustard seed, turmeric and salt and then vegetable oil. The vegetable oil is a deliberate choice not to use mustard oil that has like a lot of aroma, but just to drive really simple flavor. So you just wanna dice your potatoes so they're gonna cook quite fast in the oil. And in fact, I might even put the oil on now while I'm doing this, so I don't have to hang around. So I'm using a kadai, which is a cast iron, like traditional cooking vessel. You can get them in all the sizes. This is a big one. So really just enough vegetable oil. That might be a bit much. Let me do that again. Maybe, or just I'll keep it in. But really that was too much because I don't want to take the potatoes out of the oil. Like I don't, I want the potatoes to sort of stay in the oil and to use that oil to create um, a more intense textural aromatic element in the end result because we're not using a lot of spice. So I don't want to actually drown them, but I do want to fry them. So it's a little bit tricky. So I think that's probably about four tablespoons, maybe five. Um, and I'm going to see how I go with that. I want it to be super, super hot. Okay, leave that for a sec. Um, so I'm going to do, um, just cause it's a little snack, I think I'm only gonna do, I'll do three potatoes. Um, when we cook like this, so very, very high heat in oil with ground and dried spice, so not whole spice and not fresh spice, um, it matters when you put the produce in and when you put the spice in because um, ground and powdered spice can burn just really quickly in that kind of a heat. So I'm actually going to do something I don't normally do, which is I'm gonna put the produce in first. So potatoes will go in first. Take some of the heat out of the oil and then I'll add the rest. I'm going to move the board across because it's easier to have it all. I don't know where it should go. It'll be there. Wooden board next to open flame. That's my fire brigade training right there. <laughs> It'll be fine, she said. That's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, she said. Nothing will happen. One of the ways to understand how to make punchy flavor is to actually visually understand how to recognize what it looks like. Now, when you have spices together like this, 
Can you see that? Each of them is a distinctly different colour and there's variation in texture. This equates with contrast. Every single spice is contrasting the other and that level of contrast raises the volume, increases the intensity and increases the appearance of aroma as well. So that's your punch. Visually, if you only want to use a few spices, make sure that they look disparate as well as taste disparate and then you will have punchy flavour. Um, are you ready? It's going to spatter a little bit. Could have even been a bit hotter. See how it's sort of not like super searing. It's not bad though because when a vegetable's not cooked at all and you do want it to cook on the inside a little bit and not just crisp up on the outside, it's not bad for the oil to still have a little bit of um, like for its heat to still be a bit moderated. So that's about the right amount of oil, I think. You can see that they're sort of sitting in it. That's a nice amount of bubble. So much of cooking is visual cues. It's just understanding what a rolling boil looks like and what a medium boil looks like and what a slow simmer or a fast simmer. Um, in terms of oil, if you were talking about, you know, frying intensity, that's a medium high frying intensity. And then the other thing you'll notice is I'm not actually stirring it all the time because uh, I want it to sit and to um, cook, not just be stir fried through. Stir frying, it's a different end result of texture in your produce. So when we cook regional Indian food, stir frying is not really, um, a, it's not really a handle, it's not really uh, the way that it's done most of the time. A lot of the time it's kind of this scraping kind of technique, a sitting technique and then almost folding the produce back in on the masala and the oil. Here we go. Spice time. A teaspoon of salt, two of mustard seed, half of chili, a third of turmeric. Now that is actually a little bit too much oil. So what I'm going to do I'm going to put some tomato in here. salt which I don't always do but it's kind of aloo, aloo like salt potato 
All right. So, um, what I did was there was just a little bit too much oil in the base. And so when you heat to really high temperature and it's very oil driven, and then you add wet produce like tomato, it injects its incredible sort of heat surge and moisture. And then the moisture works to evaporate some of the oil because it flames the whole mix up and it becomes, um, the intensity of the heat actually drives some of the evaporation. And then what you're left with is more of a gravy than an oil base. And so it becomes very rich. That's done. Um, the issue with having too much oil in masala is that oil will coat the mouth, particularly like vegetable oil, and will uh, actually provide um, or create a barrier between the experience of the mouth and the masala. So you won't taste in the same way. It's like having a film, an oil slick, between the actual flavor and your experience of it. So I think I've fixed it. Let me see. Yeah, that's really delicious. Really simple. Oh, there it is. But it's nutty and caramelized and crispy and salty and hot and um, that little bit of um, almost like a leathery, almost like a jerky, if tomato was jerky, dried meat, has that texture and that taste because it's been kind of fried or flash fried at high heat. Delicious. I love that sort of food.